Hey, what's up everybody? George here, we're back with the T-Rex 450 Sports Super Combo. Now we've already finished up the build, everything went great, we learned a lot, and shout out to all the great guys on the internet that gave me a hand. Uh, but now we're ready to move on. Uh, we've got the build done and we need to set up the electronics and tune the bird in. First thing that we're going to be doing is setting up the radio, then we'll go on and we'll bind the receiver, uh, we'll program the ESC and the gyro, then we'll go through and we'll level out the uh, servo arms, level out the swash plate, set the pitch, and hopefully take this through to the ready to fly stage. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get on to getting this bird in the air. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and begin with the radio, which is the very first thing that we need to do before we can do any of the programming on the helicopter, and that is create a new profile. Um, I'm doing this on a Spectrum DX6i, and I'll quickly go through the screens that I used. I got my values uh, off the internet and from uh, personal experience, but these are just starting values for me. They are by no means the correct values. It's just where I'm going to begin with, and I'm sure I'll be making some changes, but at least I'll have the radio ready to go and move on. Um, for the settings that I used on my dual rate expo, normal, I had uh, aileron at 80 and plus 30. Elevator at 80 and plus 30, rudder at 90 and plus 25, and in stunt I had aileron at 100 and plus 20, elevator at 100 and plus 20, and rudder at 100 and plus 20. For my travel adjust, I had everything on that screen set to 100%. Sub trim, I set everything on that screen at zero. That's where I want to start out with, and I know I'll be making adjustments. On the gyro, uh, I have it set to software gyro, and at uh, rate 0, I have it at 67, and at rate 1, at 40. For my throttle curve, for normal, um, I have uh, 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100, linear curve. On stunt, I have 100, 90, 85, 90, and 100. I call that a V curve. I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but that's what it looks like. Um, for my pitch curves, I have normal at 40, 45, 50, 75, and 100. And at stunt, I'm using a linear at 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. For the swash mix, I have uh, aileron at plus 80, elevator at plus 80, and pitch at minus 60. I have both mix 1 and mix 2 uh, set to inhibit. My revo mix, uh, both up and down uh, for normal and stunt, I have at 0. For the reverses, you're going to have to figure out you know, for yourself what you want your reverses. I'm starting out with uh, no reverse on the throttle, a reverse on the elevator, no reverse on the gyro, no reverse on the elevator or aileron, uh, reverse on the rudder and pitch. And that's just what I've gotten off the internet. I may be changing that. Swash type, of course, is 120 degrees. I have throttle cut inhibited. And for my dual rate combi switch, um, I have that set for aileron. I like being able to switch one, one switch and have everything uh, go over the dual rate. So once again, these are just my basic starting settings. They're by no means golden rule. I'm just going to see where I'm at and we'll go from there. So let's move on and start uh, with the next step, which is uh, binding the receiver. Okay. I've successfully bound their transmitter and the receiver. It was no problem at all. Everything went according to plan and there was no issues. Essentially what I did was I used the binding plug. I hooked the binding plug up to the battery input of the receiver and then I went to the transmitter. I powered on the transmitter while I was holding the trainer switch and it bound. Absolutely no problems at all. Everything went according to plan. Now that I have the transmitter and the receiver bound, we can move on to the next step, which is programming the ESC. So uh, let's get right on to that. Okay, we're back and ready to program the ESC. Now, <clears throat> before I begin with the programming of the ESC, let me tell you some safety precautions which I've taken. I've gone ahead and I've moved my motor back so that the pinion doesn't touch the main gear. This way if the motor spools up, it's not going to spool up the head. I also removed the blades just to make it a little bit easier to work on. So with that out of the way, uh, programming the ESC, basically there's two modes. There's a normal mode 
which is when you start it up with the throttle in the down position, and programming mode, which you access by starting it up with the throttle in the up position. If you start it up and the throttle's in the down position and it goes into programming mode, uh, you know that you have to go in and reverse your throttle channel. When it starts up in normal mode, it cycles through all of the available settings and it tells you um, what they're set at by a series of beeps. And in programming mode, it allows you to go in and change all of those settings. Um, the first thing that I did was I figured it, the faults would probably be good. So when I plugged in the battery, I listened for the beeps and I found out that it was already preset good enough at the factory. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and let you listen to the beeps and tell you what each one of them mean um, as I went through and set this up. First beep, one, brake disabled. Second group, two, mid timing. Third group, one, high cutoff protection. Fourth group, two, soft start mode. Fifth group, quick throttle response. That's pretty much what it's already set up for, and that's exactly what I wanted. However, if I did want to change it, I could simply go into programming mode and then choose each of the settings individually. So. Um, with the ESC program, we're ready to move right on to the gyro and get the gyro programmed. Okay, we've uh, successfully programmed the GP750 gyro. Everything went according to plan. I had absolutely no problems. Um, programming the gyro is pretty straightforward. There's five lights on the gyro. The first light is for your band selection. The second light is the gyro type. The third light is your reverse. The fourth light is your limits, and the fifth light is your heli mode. Um, programming it is pretty simple. You can see now the ready light is uh, indicated that it's ready. If you press and hold the programming button, the ready light will start to flash green, indicating you're ready to start programming, and you can go through each of the five lights and set them to your preferences. Um, just to let you know, I have mine. My first light is set to green, which indicates standard band. The second light is set to green, which indicates a digital servo. The fourth light is set to green, which is normal on the reverse channel. And the fourth light, we'll talk about that in a second. And the fifth light is set to red and flashing, which indicates that it's suitable for a T-Rex 450 and other smaller helicopters. Now for setting your limit, what you want to do is go into programming mode, select the fourth light, and then use your transmitter to move your tail servo to the left until it is at its extent. When you've reached there, stop and wait. After about two seconds, the green light is going to turn red and start flashing. At that point, you could move the servo to the other extent or to the right, and when it gets there, stop. After a few seconds, the red light will indicate that it's picked up that setting, and after a few more sec seconds, it'll go out of programming mode and into normal mode, and your tail servo extents will be set, and that's all there is to it. So that pretty much finishes up setting the electronics. The next thing is, is going through and setting up the uh, head and the mechanics. Uh, and this is a good point to break off. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll be setting up the head and getting this guy ready to fly. Thanks for watching everybody and as always, happy flying.